Welcome in. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on the painting that comes with the Bob Ross basic paint set. Now the other things you get with this paint set, you get your liquid white, which you're going to put all over your canvas here. And you get two painting tools. You get the one inch landscape brush, and then you get the, uh, the smaller of the Bob Ross um, knives, the, the five painting knife there. And you're going to get five colors. So you've got your titanium white, your cadmium yellow, and blizzard and crimson, sap green, and phthalo blue. Now also uh, with this set, there is a version where you can get this set with extras. Um, the extras include Bob Ross canvas, and that is a 12 by 16 inch canvas. And you also get the wooden travel easel. You can see behind me, there's another uh, canvas on the travel easel. Now, one thing about uh, the Bob Ross canvas is that it actually is covered in a gray gesso. So you can actually tell when you've got the entire thing covered with your liquid white. Um, also with the extras set, you get the Bob Ross odorless paint thinner. Um, you don't get a bucket to put it in with this set, but it's only like $15 extra. So it's well worth it to get this as well. So this is the the bucket that you can just put the paint thinner into and it comes with that screen in there so when you're all when you're all done painting you'll take your brush while well, you put, put your paint thinner in there you take your brush and scrub it in there and then just dry your brush off or be the devil out of it <laughs> all righty so the other things you definitely want to have on hand you definitely want <laughs> a bunch of paper towels because you will be cleaning your brush like between colors but all you're going to do to clean is just you're just going to wipe off on your paper towel that's it you're not going to use the paint thinner you don't need to do that until you're all done with your painting another thing another good thing to have on hand baby wipes to clean yourself <laughs> Now, if you don't have a palette, uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, the Bob Ross Company, they do sell disposable paper palettes, just like sheets of paper, or you can just use like paper plates. That's, that's fine too. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. So for this painting, it is oriented uh, vertically. Oh, one, one other thing I wanted to mention about the Bob Ross canvases is that on the back, the edges are beveled so that you can actually stack paintings. So that's, that's a really nice, really nice feature for that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. So the first thing you're going to do is you're, you're going to take your liquid white, and like I said, you can just, you can just pour a little bit onto um, the paper plate. Uh, I have my big one here, so I'm just gonna dip right in. And you're gonna cover the whole thing, just a nice, even coat. Now see how I was talking about the, the canvas is covered with gray gesso, so you can see, you can see this white on it. So you can tell once, you're, once you've got it all covered with that liquid white. So I'm just using, little crisscross strokes and dip a little more working my way here it's better to have or to, to start off with too little because it's always easier to add more it's uh, not as easy to take away I 
Okay, a tiny bit more in the corner and then we'll be good. Okay, I'm just gonna go horizontally and vertically here. Make sure it's nice and even. Actually, I got a couple of spots there. Let's get a little bit more. Okay, and I'm going to do a little little touch test here. I'm just going to take my fingers and just touch on a couple areas of the canvas. And this is what you want to see. You want to be able to see your fingerprint still. If you're if there's just a little bit of paint coming off, then put a little more on. If uh, if you can't see your fingerprints, that means you get too much liquid white. So in that case, if you run into that, what you would do is just take a paper towel, put it on all over your canvas there. Don't don't rub it because you're going to get little little fuzzies from the paper. Just put it on there and then just do that crisscross motion and then the paper will just absorb the extra. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe out my fingerprints. All right. And we're just going to just going to wipe out there with a paper towel and then we can start going into our colors move my liquid away we don't need that for a while all right so I got I got my my giant palette out how I like to arrange my colors is in the order that I'm going to use them pretty much so like I have the Elysian Crimson and the Thalo Blue that are going to be in the sky. But uh, the first color we're going to start off with the sky is the yellow. The, the reason I have the yellow down here and the sap green is we're going to use that for highlights at the end. All right. So I'm going to take my one inch brush and kind of just tap it. The reason you want to tap it for loading is you just want the color to be nice and even on the brush. So, so we're going to be doing this first step here. We're going to be putting this yellow in. Let's leave that open. So it's basically kind of like in the middle here. Just think of like a rising, a rising sun in the distance. So we're going to start in the middle and just kind of crisscross. That nice bright yellow there. A little horizon. I think that's good there. I'm going to go ahead and just wipe out the excess. You can do this motion here where you kind of twist the palm of your hand. And I'm going to go back in and I am going to blend out that yellow into the white. Just using the same little crisscross motion. Doesn't have to be perfect because we're, we're going into the red next here. Let's do a little bit more. And of course, however much yellow you want, if you want more yellow than purple in your sky, then completely up to you. Now, I got a little hair in there. If you get a hair, just take the corner of your brush. Oh, I lost it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> and just boop, just boop it out. Put that into the paper towel and make sure you don't put it back into your painting. Just throw that paper towel away. Okay. That is pretty good for our yellow there. Let us go into our alizarin crimson. 
So take, take the same old brush here. Just a tiny, 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 tiny bit. We do not need much paint here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a little bit of, of this red down here into what's going to be our water. So I'm gonna start like mm, about, oh, about, an inch and a half from the bottom here. And I'm just going to just make a little streaky bit. And notice how when I'm going up, I have less and less of that color on my brush because it's mixing in with the liquid white that we've put onto the canvas. There we go. And then I'm just gonna wipe that off real quick. I'm going to go over it one more time. There we go. That's cool. So it's mixing in with that yellow there, giving us a nice little, nice little reflection. Let's tap a little bit more red. And then we're going to go over and put that red into the sky. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in the color. Then I'm going to wipe it off on my brush and then go back and, and blend it. So, a little crisscross motion again. We're just gonna criss, criss, crisscross. Just kind of go like in a half circle. Think of like a like a rising sun, a little sunset there. So I'm gonna wipe that off, and then go back in, and then we're just gonna we're gonna crisscross those two colors together. And then I'm going to do this number. I like to do this when I have like a sunset. Just kind of do that like half circle motion. Just kind of blend that together there. And like I said, you can bring that you can bring that red further down if you want or keep it just up. You can bring some on the side here. That's all up to you. You get that nice little, little peachy color there. That's nice. Then yeah, I like that. I like that. Well, maybe just a little bit more. <laughs> Again, how much you want to blend it is up to you, too. All right, so I'm just going to wipe that off real quick. And then we're going to make a purpley color. So we are just going to go right next door here, and we are going to take a little bit of that phthalo blue. Take some of that crimson. I'm just gonna mix it down here. And now this purple, again, it's up to you whether you want it more to the red side or to the blue side. Just a little red, I'm gonna put a little more blue in there. That looks pretty good. One thing you can do, because this color is so dark, it's kind of hard to tell what the final color will be. So you can take a little bit of titanium white, mix it in. Since I already have some of that purple on my knife there. So yeah, just mix that white in. And now, now I can tell what that color is actually going to be. So I like that color. I'm going to wipe my knife off. Then, same old brush, I'm going to tap, tap into there. So I'm going to start with the water first. So what I'm going to do, again, we're going to start at the bottom and work our way to the top. We're not going to go all the way though, we're going to we're gonna, we want, we want this red to, to stay in show. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk, start from the bottom corner, work our way up. So we're gonna do just horizontal lines like that. There we go. 
Mm. I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off because see, as you do that, you're picking up some of that liquid white that's on there. So let's go ahead and wipe that off. I'm actually going to go in one more time here, just blend it up a little bit more. I might even go back one more time and make it darker. We'll see. We'll see. All right, same thing on the other side. Yeah. See, I like the darker. Okay, so let's go. Wipe that off. Still keeping a little bit of that red in the middle for that reflection. I'm gonna go back to the other side and make that side a little bit darker. And again, up to you whether you want your, your water a little, little darker, a little, a little lighter. A lot of this water is going to be covered up by, by like rolling hills of grass and everything, so. But some of it will show through, so it's nice to have. Okay, I think that is looking pretty good there. I'll connect at the bottom a little more. Just don't go over it too many times because you want you want those nice little little stripey bits there to show that it's water. Okay. I'm going to let's grab a little bit more of this purple here. Just a little bit. We don't need too much. And I'm going to put in this final little area at the top. Now the darkest color I like to be at the corners here. So I'm going to start with the corners, work my way across the top, and then down the side. So I'm just work, working my way down into that pinky color. I'm going to wipe my brush so that I can blend those colors together. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to start by crisscrossing. And then I'm going to do that little circular motion again here. I'm just blending, blending those two colors together. And if this isn't dark enough for you, you can always go back and add more. But again, it's, it's easier to start with a little bit of paint and then, <laughs> and then work your way towards darker and more paint. Harder to go the other way. Okay. I think that's a nice little sky there. Um, one thing they mention in the instructions, but they don't put on until later, is if you want, you can put little streaky clouds. So I'm going to show you those because those are really nice and really, really effective. So what, I, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to hold my one inch brush so it's vertical. So you see the, the bristles are going that way, not that way, horizontal ways. And then I'm going to take that, I'm just going to tap it. So I'm basically tapping like the edge of the breast, the edge of the bristles here. So I'm not going like straight in like that. I'm going in at an angle. And again, just tapping, just tapping very lightly. All right. And then if you want, let's see where they put theirs. Yeah. Just put a couple just a tapping very lightly here, very lightly. Do some on the other side. And let's do this one there. Now what I'm going to do, once again, put your color in, wipe your brush, then blend it. So I'm going to wipe off the excess color here. And to blend it in, just going to do the same thing, just going to tap. So I'm going to just going to tap, tap, tap. You can you can keep tapping until they go away pretty much. 
the more you tap, the softer they will get. Same thing over here, just tapping. So again, you want to go in with a relatively clean brush. You want to go in with the brush wiped off with a paper towel before you go in here so the, the brush has no paint on it. It's just tapping away there. And then I'm going to just do one more thing. I'm just going to blend out the, the ends of those clouds there. Just so that there is no end to those clouds. They just keep going on. All right, that's nice there. Okay. Now, for everyone's favorite part, of Bob's paintings, the mountain. Yes. So we're gonna do a nice purpley mountain. So, lucky us, we still have that purpley color. So what we're gonna do, take the knife, just grab that. If you need to make more, make more, no biggie. So I'm gonna take this color, I'm gonna make a flat little runway here. And again, this is just phthalo blue and alizarin crimson. That is it. So I've got my little runway here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to just, just cut a little roll of paint off. And then, oh, let's see. Um, this pretty simple mountain here. It's got like three peaks. So let's do that. I'm going to make... I'm going to make my tallest peak kind of go over that little cloud here. Now see how I'm kind of jiggling my hand here? If you jiggle your hand like that, it kind of makes the mountain more natural looking. Let's get some more paint. So I just cut off another little roll of paint there. Make another little peak. Just make the, that peak a little more standout-ish. So really, with these mountains, I'm just worried about the top outline here. So now that I put that color in, I'm scraping it off. So basically, you just want to stain the canvas with this color. So put it on, scrape it off. Now I'm not going all the way to the edge of the canvas yet, not with my knife, but I will with the next step. All right, so got our little mountain base on there. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, well, I'm just gonna wipe this off on the palette and I'm gonna wipe this off with my paper towel there. Okay, now go back in with your one inch and you're gonna hold it horizontally again, and you want to go up almost, almost to that crest. You wanna keep the crest nice and crispy. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that color, you're gonna drag it to the end of the canvas. So we're just taking that color and dragging it, and that's all. And remember, remember, keep your, keep your top edges nice and crispy. If, if you go over and, um, make it uncrispy, <laughs> that's fine. Just go back in with your knife and just remake the edge. Your mountain will just be a little bigger, it's fine. No worries. So again, just taking it and grabbing it there. Just grab that color, grab it, push it off on the side. Push the color off to the edge. There we go, I'm sort of just dragging this, dragging this, dragging this, dragging this. And of course you will notice that it is, the color is getting lighter because it is mixing in with that yellow that's in the background there. So I'm dragging it 
Oh, about eh, a couple inches away from the water there. I think that's that's going to be pretty good. Eh, maybe maybe a little more. Give myself a little more room here. And this doesn't have this part doesn't have to be perfectly blended or anything. I'm gonna wipe off my brush again. And then I'm gonna go back in and I'm just gonna blend out um, just the bottom. So I'm just gonna crisscross here. See that that purpley color is blending in with the yellow and making like a nice kind of yellow grayish color. All right, and then that'll become like the the misty base of the mountain there. Cool deal. So you can kind of see as we were streaking the color across, we we're kind of creating our little crest there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put in the highlights for the mountain. And all we're going to do is just, we're just going to use straight titanium white for that. So back up to the palette here. So I'm going to take the white and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to drag it down, make a little runway there. And same thing, we're just going to cut in and get a little roll of paint. All right, now putting the highlights on the mountain. You want a very, 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 very light touch. Like Bob says, be a whisper, a whisper on the mountain. So no pressure whatsoever. What you're going to do, I'm going to line this edge up with this edge. When this paint grabs onto the canvas, it's going to stay there. So all you're doing is you're just guiding it. So I'm going to go up. I'm gonna go boop, there it is. And I'm just gonna hold it with like two fingers. And I am just guiding it, no, absolutely no pressure. No pressure, you are just guiding it. There you go. Now, if you saw when I was guiding it down, I was keeping this corner along the edge of the mountain the whole time. So that's good there. I'm going to wipe off that, grab another little roll of paint. That's good for that mountain because that mountain's pretty, he's pretty tiny. So I have a little bigger roll of paint for this one because this one's pretty big. That's going to be our biggest crest there. Same thing. And you're going to hold this so loosely that it might fall. And that's, that's okay. That's good. That means you're holding it loosely enough. <laughs> That happens to me all the time. So match it up. Boop. There we go. And then drag it down. Again, just barely, barely holding it. But that's how you get those breaks in the mountain. And just drag it all the way. Wipe off your knife every time because as you're doing that, you'll see that you'll be collecting that yellow that's on there. So let's go in and do another, another pass because this is our biggest, our biggest crest here. So I'm just going to go up to, right up to where we ended up last time. I'm going to do the same thing. Let's make it a little wider. like that. Let's put it over there. Uh, let's see. If you want to get real fancy, you can go in and you can just do a little swoop and make another crest. Like that. And bring that crest down. And then sometimes in your highlights, you'll see little purples and, and reds and things like that. All those, all those beautiful colors showing up. I think that's pretty good for that side. And this, now this one, he's very tiny. So I am just going to use this end of the knife. 
same thing, just cutting off a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of paint there. And just gonna gently, just gonna gently pull a little indication there. That's it. That's all we need for that one. Oh, while I'm at it, I'll give this one a little highlight too. He's gonna be mostly back there because this, this shadow is gonna cross over. So speaking of shadow, what we're gonna do, we are just going to take, we're gonna take white and we're gonna add it to that alizarin crimson and phthalo blue mixture. Now I already have a little bit up here, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take that. So let me take some titanium white there and a little bit of that. Don't want it too dark, just a flavor. There you go. Same exact thing. Make your little runway. And you don't have to mix this completely. You can leave it marbled like that. It has a really nice effect. Same thing, cut off your little roll of paint. And then for the shadow side, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take that long end and we're just gonna match it. We're gonna, we're gonna meet where this white is and we're just gonna Again, very gently, I'm just gonna drag it. See how I had to do it a couple times because it was so gentle, paint wasn't coming off. We're just dragging it. And I'm just gonna drag it to meet up with that other mountain there. And I'm just gonna keep doing that along this side here. That's good for that one. Let's get a little more. Paint, that highlight color. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do, I'll do this one first. Since this crest is closest to us. And you can even take some of that white and drag it over into your shadow. And again, since this area is a little smaller, well, first I'm, I'm gonna do this one first here. Again with my little, the little part of my knife. There we go. Not quite enough paint there. Grab a little. Drag it. Here. And yeah, let's go ahead and go back to the longer side of the knife for this one here. Yeah, same thing, just drag it down. I'm gonna get my little little part again and just fill in this little a uh, little crevice. I want to keep a little dark area between those areas so that it stands out. It's looking pretty, pretty good. I think I'm going to extend this one a little bit more. So let me grab a little more white. My, my wipes for my hands there. Okay, I just grabbed a little bit more white. I'm just going to grab it and drag it just a little bit more. Okay, that looks pretty good there. Now, go back in with your one inch brush there. And then all we're gonna do is you're just gonna clean up the bottom. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, we're just gonna tap a little bit onto where the, the edge of the shadow and highlight are. 
just gonna tap that up a little bit and blend it in that's all and I'm going in the direction that that the swoop is going so on this side I'll tap in this direction and what you're also doing here besides creating this little misty bit you're creating a plane for what we're going to be doing next so let's mix up let's mix up more of this of the shadow color so again that's uh, alizarin crimson phthalo blue and titanium white so let's do let's see Um, that looks pretty good there. So what we're going to do, we're going to put in two layers of really distant trees. So the second layer is going to be the one that's closest to us. So we want that one to be a little darker. The, ones, the things that are closest to us are, we're going to see more detail and everything. So that's why there's going to be a little darker. But um, the things that are furthest away, they're going to be a little 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 fainter because of like atmospheric perspective and everything molecules in the air getting in the way you know <laughs> science all right i think that's pretty good there wipe that off okay back to our one inch brush what we're going to do here, we're going to take it, we're going to load it up with that color. We're going to wiggle it in, we're going to wiggle it in, wiggle it in, wiggle it in. So you're going to use a lot of paint for this. See, I might, might need to make some more here. Eh, it looks pretty good. We'll see. We'll see. We shall see. Basically, what you want as you're wiggling see how i'm flipping and wiggling flipping and wiggling you want it to come to a chiseled edge like this so we're going to use this for distant trees here and we're going to use that technique later as well for the evergreen trees you can also do this technique with a fan brush um, you'll get a, a very different effect the with the fan brush your trees will be very um a lot thinner and you can put a lot more in um, also with the evergreens it's going to be a lot easier with the fan brush so i would suggest if you are getting this uh, basic set definitely get yourself a fan brush as well <laughs> as bob would say it'll pay you great dividends <laughs> all right so what we're going to do here so we are on to, we've done our background, we've done our mountains. So now we're on to this step where we're, see we've got our two layers of trees in here. So we're gonna put in our first layer here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna hold the brush vertically. So like that. And what we're gonna do, we call these like crash down trees. So we're gonna, Gonna basically crash down. So I'm gonna start like here and we're gonna do, 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 do. just crash down just like that. I can already tell I'm gonna need more paint. <laughs> In order to keep that chiseled edge, you gotta have a lot of paint. So let's make some more. All right, let's make some more titanium white as well. Okay, so same thing here. I'm gonna I'm just gonna grab the rest of this purpley color that we have. I got purple, purple, purple everywhere. So let's grab these colors here and the white. Let's mix that all together. Yeah, heck, the rest of the light. And to mix, I'm just picking it up, flipping it over, that's all. Okay. 
All right, that looks pretty good to me. Okay, same deal. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. 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 Wiggle, So you're going to use a lot of paint for this. Okay, so we got our chiseled edge back. And you'll have to do that frequently to keep that chiseled edge, too. So same thing, I'm going to go back in. See, it's a little darker now. That's good. I'm starting to lose my chiseled edge, so I'm going to go, going to go back in and wiggle some more. Okay, same deal. Like I said, it's a lot easier with the fan brush. <laughs> Keeps that, that sharp edge a lot longer. You do have a cool effect with this though. So see how I'm, I'm putting them in and then I'm going back in towards the base of these trees and kind of filling, filling the spaces between. Let me do a little. And I'm also, with my trees, I'm putting them taller at the ends and shorter towards the middle. And then some are darker than others just to get a little variety. So this one, these ones, oh, the color's about the same. So I'm gonna go in and just darken up a couple of them just to, just to give them a little, little variety there. I think that's pretty good. But again, I'm gonna go back in towards the base and I'm gonna connect them a little bit more here because you don't want them looking like fence posts. Don't want that. Okay. That's looking good there. Okay. I am going to wipe off this brush. <laughs> this brush is going to get soaked. <laughs> I'm going to want plenty of paper towels for this. Okay. So I've wiped out the majority, the excess paint there. Now what we're going to do, and you see how as I've been doing this, I've still been keeping a little bit of that yellow in there. I've still been keeping a little bit of that, that mountain mist. So now what we're going to do, you know how with the mountain, we tapped out the bottom edge just to make it nice and misty and create a nice little plane for our trees. We're going to do the exact same thing here. All right. So brush relatively clean. <laughs> so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna we're just gonna tap it out. We're just gonna tap out the base. So I'm basically just using kind of like the corner of my brush here. So just tapping it and making it misty. That's all. And just the bottoms. Just the bottoms of these trees. And I'm gonna wipe off my brush every so often. Nice and misty. I'm going to tap just a little bit more. Just kind of blending that purple in with the yellow misty bit. 
There we go. Let's see, we have reached the water. But see, we're just about, eh, just a, about two thirds down the way of our canvas here. So we're gonna do the exact same thing we just did, but the color's gonna be a little bit darker. So back in with our knife and Eastern Crimson, Phthalo Blue. Just gonna mix it in with that same color. So I'm not adding any white this time. I'm just using the white that's already, already here. And again, with the purple, you can either make it more to the blue side, more to the red side. You could have one line of trees more to the blue side, and then like your closer ones more to the red side. Or you can add a little bit of sap green just to mix up the color a little bit. Totally up to you. Okay. The key is you just want this color to be a little darker. Yeah, so that looks that's pretty good there. Let's wipe that off. Okay, so again, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna load that brush by wiggling it. So, got all that color here, and wiggle, 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 <laughs> and wiggle, 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 wiggle. The reason you're wiggling is that you want to drench that brush in color. Because in order to get that chiseled edge, you gotta have a lot of paint, a lot of paint. And like I said, this is gonna give you great practice for our closer trees. There we go, there's our chiseled edge there. Okay, so. Same thing, let's put a little line of trees in. And since these are darker, they should stand out. If they're not standing out, make your color darker. Or add green. Another thing you want to keep in mind for this line of trees is we want to have ref ref <laughs> we want reflections. So every tree that you do match it in the water. So imagine this little yellow line as your water line and just drag that down there. So like your taller ones just you know have to match that in the water. See, I got fence posts going on there, so we just want to make sure you connect them in the middle. So make sure to keep that misty area to separate your, your tree areas. Okay, that looks pretty good there. So what I'm going to do is 
wipe off all that extra extra paint. That was a lot. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get messy. You're gonna get messy, especially with this technique. Again, we'll do the little spin there. Clean out the brush. Now, I mentioned earlier, you don't want to clean out your brushes with paint thinner until the very end. If you, if you clean your brush and paint thinner and it's not completely dry, you will take that paint thinner back into that painting and you will ruin it in a heartbeat. Believe me, I've done it. <laughs> I'm just going to go back in here and finish that edge there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do with our relatively clean brush we're going to pull down our reflections. So like I said, kind of imagine like mm, that yellow part being like a water line there. So I'll show you what we're going to be doing on the next page there. So we're going to pull down for reflections and then we're going to put our little water line in. So I'm going to start like, like right here and not a whole lot of pressure on this. Basically you're just dragging, just dragging the paint down, but pull it straight down. Looks kind of weird if your reflections are going off to the side. <laughs> okay, that looks good there. Now what we're going to do, I just wiped off the brush again. I'm just going to go back in again and just very lightly, two hairs and some air, just brush across. But see how I did that and immediately I have these little like tiny water lines showing up. And that's just to make it look nice and watery, that's all. But now it looks kind of like the water is, is breaking up those reflections. So it's a nice effect there. All right, clean that brush out again. And... I got covered in purple, so <laughs> baby wipes for me. All right, then we're going to go in and put in our water line. Another effect I'll show you real quick that they do in the book. Take the brush. Tap a little bit of white into it. And tap it onto, tap it onto the, what's going to be the water line there. And this is totally optional, but it's just a cool little effect. So what you can do is with your brush, you can take that, that white, you can pop it up. This makes like a just a cool effect there. And if you want, you can take some of it and bring it up more. Just a little a little something there. Just to make make the trees pop. All right, so we're good with that. Now, waterline. Take the knife 
and we're just going to grab a little bit of liquid white. So, got the liquid white. I'm just going to throw that on my palette. And like I said, you can just um, just pour out just a, a, a teensy bit, like onto a paper plate or anything like that. Now, the way I load my knife, I go in from the side and kind of, kind of push, kind of push that paint. And that way it loads the, that liquid white just on the edge. Now, what you're going to do, you're going to act like you're sawing into the canvas. So I'm going to start, I'm going to start from the middle. And we're just going to just saw along. I'm going to reload here. So when you're pushing hard against the canvas like that and doing that sawing motion, it's squeezing out the paint into this little line there. It gives a really cool effect. You gotta press pretty hard for it. Just don't break your knife. <laughs> you can actually do this with um, the liquid white or you can do it with titanium white as well. Either way. A little bit on the side here. Okay, that's good. We got our little water line back here. Just gonna wipe off the knife here. All right, so. So we are, we are here. <laughs> so not too much more to do. What we have uh, next is we have to put in, we have to mix up a base color and that's gonna be all your dark colors. So your thalo blue, your glycerin crimson and your sap green. You're gonna mix all three of those colors together to get this really dark greenish brownish color. So you're gonna use that base color for the base of your trees and also the base for your grass. So we're almost there, not too much more. So let's go ahead and mix that up. I'm gonna squeeze out a little more alizarin crimson here. Because I used up a lot of that. And no, no white, just, just the crimson, blue and green. Okay, so back to the palette knife. Now what I'm going to do first, before I mix all three colors together, I'm going to make a tiny little pile of just, just green and red. Green and red mixed together make a really pretty brown. And we're going to use that brown for the tree trunks. So I'm just going to, I'm going to make it and put it off to the side. And just like with the purple, you can have it more to the green side. You can have it more to the red side. I'm going to have it more to the red side. And we'll add white to that later. Okay. So we've got our brown. And let's go ahead and mix that base color now. So let's do, let's bring this green over here to the blue and crimson. Again, we're gonna need a lot of paint for this. A lot of paint. So basically I want, I want a lot of green in it because I want it to look kind of like a really, really dark green. That looks perfect to me. Okay. All right. Let's flop that down. I'll wipe off my knife so it doesn't get anything else dirty. Okay. 
Back to our one inch brush. <laughs> this entire painting, one inch brush and a knife. You can do it. You can do it. All right, here we go. Same thing we did before. We're going to wiggle all that color in. And we're going to do, well, I think we have three trees here. Yeah, we'll do three trees. So, and it's okay if it's got this purple in it. Not, not going to matter. So wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle that color in. Okay, that looks good to me. Nice, oops, there we go. Nice chiseled edge there. All right, for your evergreen trees, you wanna hold it vertically. And we're going to we're going to make a little just a little vertical line first just to get our tree started let's do let's do this one first so i'm going to start on hmm, right about here so i'm just going to just tap a little line in now what we're going to do we're going to take just the corner of the brush and we're going to start our branches Give it a little room up here, and then with just the corner of your brush, back and forth with branches. Think of like a zipper, how the zipper teeth are. Back and forth, and you see me alternating here. The further down on the tree we get, the harder you're going to press. What I like to do, I like to go down and then I'll, I'll go back up and kind of beef up my trees there. I'm gonna put a little more color on here. The thing is we want this background color to be really dark because we're going to put highlights on here. So we want those highlights to show against the dark. And let's see how far we're we gonna go down here. I'm gonna go down a little, just a little farther. You could not even put the grass in and just, you know, just have these trees here. Totally up to you. So I'm gonna go back up and beef up my tree here. Just a little, a little more up here. This little extra beef. Okay, I think that's pretty good there. I'm gonna do a little more on the side because half of this tree isn't showing up. Half of this tree is is hanging out the side here. That's pretty good for that tree there. Let's work on the other ones. All right, same thing. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Like I said, you're gonna use a lot of paint for this. <laughs> if you're using a fan brush, you don't use nearly as much paint. So if you're conservative with your paint like I am, get yourself a fan brush. <laughs> Okay, all right. And how many trees you wanna put in, that's up to you too. We're just putting three in today, but you can put in more if you want. Okay, let's, let's, let's do the same thing here. I'm gonna start my tree. Let's start it right here. Well, let's make this one a little bit taller. How about that? Do, 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 do. Okay, that's pretty good there. I'm just gonna go back in just to chisel my edge a little bit more. 
same thing. I'm going to go in with just the corner. Ooh, just, gee, just tap a little bit. So you're going to go out and then go back towards the middle. Branch, back to the middle, back to the middle. I flip over to the other side here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, a little more paint. So we're cutting through our liquid white there. As you go further down the tree, the branches are going to get thicker and longer. Shoot, this is going to go all the way. There we go. <laughs> That's good there. I said we were going to put one more tree in, so let's let's do that. One more tree. I'm just going to smash these branches a little more, make them a little thicker. If you make really thin branches, you can do that. Just keep in mind it's going to be harder to put highlights on. If you have a branch that's <laughs> that's uh, that thin then your, your highlight's going to be like half of that. So yeah. So you want a, want a thicker base color for your, for your branches there. Okay. Where are we going to put our last tree? Uh, let's, yeah, let's put them, let's put them here with this one. Let's have him uh, right here. There we go. Okay, same thing. I'm just going to go back in with the corner of my brush. Do, do, do. I will say doing it with the one inch brush is going to be faster, but if you're not worried about time, get the fan brush. Okay. And just a little bit more here. I'm not sure which one's going to be in front yet. And we'll, we'll decide that later with the highlights. Maybe the little one will be in front. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. That's good for my trees there. So I have just enough paint left here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm loading the brush a little differently. I'm tapping it this time. So we're going to put our grass in. This is again the base color. Excuse me. Same color. I'm holding it horizontally again. I'll show you back on the picture here. So we've got our we've got our trees in. So we're just gonna put just a little little thing here. We put they put like a little a little dip in there. So we'll yeah we'll go ahead and do that. Make a little make a little dip. So and even though I brought my trees all the way down here, we can we can adjust and. And cut them off. 
Or, like I said, if you want your trees to go all the way, that's fine too. And then just have less grass. Or none. Have your trees go all the way. Okay. And we're just, just tapping just to cover the bottom here. I'm making a little little dip like they did in the picture. Just a little bit. Okay. Doing good. Go ahead and wipe off your brush again. <laughs> wipe off as much paint as you can. The nice thing about um, putting the highlight color in is since we still have a little bit of that, that dark green color in there, the yellow will mix with that dark green and make a really, really nice, pretty green highlight color. Okay. You can also do this technique with a two inch brush. Again, you're going to use even more paint, <laughs> but it's possible. It's possible. Okay, so that's cleaned out eh, pretty well as well as we can get it for now. Okay, now, remember that brown mixture we did? Now we're going back to it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to grab the rest of the white that I have here. If you need more white, just squeeze out some more. So I want this to be kind of like a light tannish color. So I'm going to mix that mix that white in with that brown. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And again, this doesn't have to be like fully mixed or anything. It can be it can be marbledy. And it's up to you whether you want a darker brown or a lighter brown. And go a little, little darker. Okay, that's pretty good right there. And I'm gonna make another little runway there, just like we did with the mountains. Cut off a little roll of paint. There you go. Okay, now for the tree trunks, all you're gonna do, when I cut off my roll of paint, the roll landed on the left side. So, so I'm kind of kind of angling my knife a little towards me because the paint is on the inside here. All I'm gonna do, just gonna touch. Boop. There we go. Just touch, just touch. You don't want one solid line for the tree trunk. Because there's branches, you wouldn't be able to see the whole tree trunk. There, that's nice. All right, let's grab a little more. We got a little trunk for this little one here. Oop. Oop. <laughs> a little more angled there. There you go. One more. And again, if it's not showing up enough, you can always go back, grab more paint. I'm making the bottom of the trunk a little thicker there. Nice. That's all you need, just a little indication. That's it. You don't even have to put them in if you don't want to, but <laughs> it's nice to have them. Okay, just clean off my knife there. And we are almost done. Okay. It's so like I was saying earlier, I've already got a little bit of that green on here. So we're gonna we're gonna do our highlights now. What I'm going to do to make the color stick, I'm gonna put a little bit of liquid white on my brush. 
There we go. And I'm going to mix that into this yellow. But same thing, we're just going to wiggle. But see how the, the green is mixing in there? It's getting that really, really cool color. Or if you want more green in your uh, in your highlight color, put more green in. It's all up to you. I think I'm going to put a little more green in. This is just um, sap green and cad yellow there. That's it. So same thing. You're just wiggling that color in, getting your little, your little wedge. And the highlights, you're going to do the exact same way. You don't need to highlight the little, the top there. But I'm going to go into, let's do this one first. I'm basically going to highlight the tops of the branches. And this is a very light touch. And you will have to reload frequently. So I did that, that amount there, and that's about it. I got to reload. So for the highlights, you're going to use a lot of paint, a lot of paint. And if the paint isn't coming off, get more liquid white on there. If when you're touching, you don't see the highlight color and it's just, it's just mixing in there and you're becoming a mud mixer, put more liquid white into your highlight color. And then it'll stick on to the base color. And again, this is a very, very, very light touch. Extremely light touch. And see how I'm kind of just highlighting the, the tops of the branches there. And I actually want the highlights to get darker towards the bottom there. Okay. It's looking pretty good. Let's get a little more. More highlight color there. And same thing, I'm just gonna tap very gently. Eh, heck, I'll put a little, little highlight up there. Just a little bit. Flip my brush to the other side there. I think I'm going to have the highlights on this one a little darker. I'm going to have the little one in front. Ooh, excuse me. Let me get a little more here. More of this highlight color. I'm going to wipe out my brush there. I'm just going to go back into these highlights and just make them a little softer there so they don't look like lines. <laughs> That's a little better. All right, I'm going to go back in that highlight color. Okay, let's go back into our little one here. And let's highlight the top a little bit. Why not? And make our way down this tree. This tree is going to be in front here. Okay, 
but you don't want to touch too much. If you touch too much, then they'll just they'll blend them away. Okay. Good to go. Break up the middle spot there so it's not one solid, <laughs> not one solid piece. Okay. All right, one last thing to do, and that is the grass. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe out as much paint as I can on this one inch brush because I actually want the texture of the brush as it normally is for the grass. So I'm gonna wipe out as much as I can here. Get some of my thumb, that's okay. That's okay. Do my little spinny move there. So I want it to look like that again. <laughs> so I want that texture. Okay, and I'm just going to go back into the sap green and cad yellow. Now, before I do that, I'm going to dip a little bit into liquid white. That should be pretty good there. So I just dipped a little bit of the liquid white, and I'm going to mix that into this green mixture. Now, when I'm loading for the grass, I'm tapping again, back to tapping. So as I'm tapping, you'll see this texture, this little spongy texture. That's what you wanna see, because that's the texture you want for your grass. So I am now going to There we go, so that looks nice and, nice and spongy there. I'm going to hold my brush horizontally and we're going to put the grass in in lines so I'm going to start so I got it horizontal there I'm going to start from from the back actually I'm going to start from over here and I'm going to tap very gently very gently we're just going to put the grass in in layers so I start, start at the top and I'm kind of tapping my way down here and see how it's naturally getting darker and darker and darker. So I'm gonna go back in, get a little more paint. And do the same exact thing. See how it got lighter again? Because I got more paint on my brush. And same thing, I'm just gonna I'm just tapping, 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 making my way, so just holding it horizontally again, making my way towards the bottom. Let's see how the grass is going in in hills like that. So I got a couple of hills over here. I'm going to go on to the other side and do hills overlapping. So eh, same basic color. Uh, Put a tiny bit of yellow in there too. And again, holding it horizontally, that is the key. So I'm gonna start from the back here. Again, very, very, very light touch. And if you're, if you're not seeing the paint come off, more paint and more liquid white. For the highlights, you want a lot of paint, a lot of paint and a little liquid white mixed in there. So I'm gonna flip over to the other side of my brush here. There we go. Got nice and strong there. Flip back to the other side just to kind of blend it, blend it away. So I'm gonna wipe off some of that. And 
just gonna soften a little bit there. Again, don't tap too much. You don't want to soften. Don't soften everything. <laughs> just gonna put another another tiny little roll back here. There. A little patch of grass. Okay. And there it is. We did it. Yay. Congratulations. <laughs> Great job. Alrighty. So that was a lot of fun. I, I really like all the colors in this one, all the purples and everything. The sky is really, really pretty on that one. Um, if, if you get a chance to do it, um, let me know. Let me know your experience. Let me know if you if you tried the um, the trees with either, if you did them either with the one inch brush or if you did them with the fan brush or if you tried both ways. Let me, <laughs> let me know because I, I think the fan brush is a lot easier. So definitely, definitely invest in a fan brush. Um, if you get the if you get the master set, the master set does come with a fan brush. Um, I will probably also do a tutorial of that painting as well. So if you if you are interested in more tutorials and wanna wanna see one of those, or um, if you have any suggestions of any other tutorials you'd like to see, um, just just like and like and subscribe, and and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.